So hello and welcome back to Go Again Gaming and the league that means absolutely nothing here in week four, the penultimate Swiss round. Uh, we've got one more round of Swiss after this before we cut to the top eight. We're going to have five Swiss rounds now rather than four. But uh, today we've got Hank versus Will Bradshaw. Hank is on Viserai and Will is on Prism Awakener of Soul. This is going to be an interesting game. Um, Prism obviously cares about allies and ward and hank has got got a lot of answers to that in the form of uh, rune chance so it's going to be interesting to see how this one goes um i i feel like viscerai does have a bit of an edge because of the fact that if he builds up a lot of rune chance all of those little one pings those little little pings here and there can trigger the ward on anything no matter how much damage you're taking from those one sources of arcane your wards will pop um, and obviously with only a limited amount of angels and figments in the deck, once those angels die permanently, they're not going to be able to be retrieved unless you're, you know, having something like Angel of Rebirth or Avalon uh, to get those back. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see how this turns out, and I'm casting it on my own today simply because um, scheduling of trying to get other people onto the show was difficult, uh, but this is, only the, this is the first time we've had to do this uh, for the entirety of the league, so hopefully you enjoy it nonetheless. So without further ado, let's go down to the table where Viserai is going to be taking on Prism Awakener of Soul. Cool, so here we are. Viserai versus Prism, and as we can see, Hank is just cutting the deck there at the moment, and uh, I'm not entirely sure who is going first in this one at the moment. Um, when I edited this, I think we cut away just as they decided who was going first and who was going second. However, it looks like we are going to be underway very, very soon, with Hank just setting the life turtles on his phone, and he's even got a Viserai background on his phone. Look at that. That is absolutely commitment to the cause. I didn't even know Hank was this much of a Viserai fan. I remember when he had the Icelander PCG rated 10, was it PCG card, the rating people? I can't remember what their name is. I think it is PCG. Uh, the people that rated rate cards and all that good stuff. I remember when he got his Icelander back and it was an, it was a 10 and he was so, so chuffed with it. But now it looks like he's made the switch to Viserai as Icelander is no longer available to play in CC. Um, but it um, looks like we're finally drawing four cards now. Uh, Will Bradshaw, we have seen him play the Goliath Gauntlet in the league that means nothing, but obviously opting for the Null Rune Gloves, which will allow him to obviously fizzle out those uh, those rune chants. But Hank is starting the game here with a Tunic going to one, first of all. Um, and he's going to kick it all off by the looks of it. Um, on Hank's screen as well, you can see that uh, they've uh, he, he set them both to 40 life. But as you can see on the overlay here, it is correct with Hank at 40 and Will at 32 instead. Um, but uh, yeah, it looks like Hank's going to kick us off here with a Runeblood Incantation. We've seen a lot of this card on uh, on Hank's feature games. Just a card that allows you to regenerate a rune chant every single turn uh, for the next three turns. Pretty cool, pretty good for sort of consistent rune chant generation. And uh, yeah, should be uh, all the dogs going. The dogs going off on one here. Um, but uh, yeah, nice little Runeblood Incantation to uh, to start it off. And the dog really agrees with this Reaping Blade that's coming in now for three. Uh, so Reaping Blade just being a 1 for 3 uh, obviously uh, in old Viserai decks it used to be a Rosetta but uh, no longer, that's gonna, just going to be blocked out by a Herald of Protection Red Will's uh, gladly showing us that card there and Hank pitching away a, a, quite a red heavy hand um, and at the end of Hank's turn Will is going to establish a Genesis by the looks of it, this is pretty nasty as a turn 0 and obviously Will Bradshaw will draw up at the end of uh, Hank's turn here. So to establish a Genesis on turn zero is pretty backbreaking, and this is going to set up an absolute engine for Prism Awakener of Soul. Um, because every turn you can put a, uh, a card from your hand into your hero soul, and if it's an illusionist card, you get a spectral shield, and if it's a light card, you draw a card. So ideally, you just want to be putting heralds in there with uh, with Genesis. You can also trigger Prism as well, I believe, if you put things into your soul with Prism. Um, so, uh, so yeah, Genesis is a great card to start for Will here on turn zero. Um, but uh, but yeah, looks like it's going to be Will on the play now, and it looks like he is triggering the Genesis and putting in a, I believe that's a attack reaction, uh, Angelic Wrath. That's the one he's putting in there. Angelic Wrath, he's putting into his soul, which I believe is just a light card. Is it a light illusionist, or is it a light card? I don't know. I haven't flashed up the image here post production. So he is going to get a, a spectral shield. Um. 
And he is going to draw, so it is a Light Illusionist card. So he's going to get both things there. He's going to get a Spectral Shield and a draw. Which is great for just filtering the hand. Charging the soul. Well, not physically charging the soul mechanically, but just putting things in the soul ready for when the angels come out. Because every time you have to, well, every time you attack with an angel, I think you have to banish a card from soul. So it's nice to load it up early. And then he's just going to establish a Pierce Reality on field, um, which is one of those auras which will uh, just accrue a lot of value over time if it's not dealt with. With the first illusionist attack getting plus two each turn with while that's out on field, um, so that's pretty good. But um, yeah, Will's passed. Over to Hank. He's just going to tick down his Rune Blood Incantation, get a Rune Chant from that. So he's on Run Rune Chant now. And obviously his Tunic's gone up as well. Um, but yeah, Rune Blood Incantation, one of Hank's favourites. Nice little aura that just generates Rune Chants over time. And just gives you that um, it gives you that guaranteed Rune Chant, just in case anything else in your hand cares about Rune Chants. Like those D-Reacts, like the Reduced to Rune Chants. Sometimes care about those. And there's a lot of other things as well that I can't remember off the top of my head that care about Rune Chants. Of course in a Viscerai deck. But Hank on the play here. And holy hell, I think my dog has just farted. That's absolutely outrageous. Pure smelly. But anyway, um, yeah, we've, uh, we're on Hank's turn at the moment. Should be, uh, should be interesting to see what he does here. Because two Spectres have already been established. He's got Genesis to deal with and Pierce Reality. Um... And uh, I, I imagine that Viserai can hold his own with regards to poppers. He's got quite a lot of poppers in his deck, like Ninth Blades and Amplify the Arc Knights and things that we've seen already Hank play on this league in other games. Um, Arc Knight Ascendancy like doesn't quite get that. That's a five. But things like Runic Re Reclamation, I, I think Viserai does have access to a lot of poppers. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what uh, you know how Hank can interact with that side of things as well. But yeah, they're both in the tank. They're both pretty much in the tank here, figuring out what is going on. Hank is gesturing towards his grass. Maybe he wants to sort of... That will cost quite a lot, though, right? It costs it'll cost three to do that. And it looks like he is doing that. He is using his grasp to create another rune chant. That's going to cost him three, car uh, three resources, a yellow and a red, to do that. Um, so, uh, so, yeah. Looks like Hank... Doesn't really have too much to do, but wow, okay. So Will is going to establish a arc light sentinel at instant speed as well. Um, so the next attack has to be directed at arc light sentinel, um, which uh, which is pretty annoying. It's interesting to see why Will's played it now instead of later. But the other great thing about um, and he's going to pitch and amplify the Arc Knight into the Reaping Blade. So the Reaping Blade is just going to go straight at the Arc Light Sentinel. But before it does, it's going to fire two Rune Chants off as well, I believe. Yeah, so the Rune Chants are going to fire off as well. Um, this is the great thing about, I think, the new rules with regards to Spectra. Is that obviously you declare an attack. The things that will trigger, like Rune Chants and that, pop off. But then the attack just doesn't resolve. Um, so uh, so yeah, it looks like Will has taken that damage. Obviously, one of the shields has eaten up one of the rune chants, and obviously he's just taken one to the face. Uh, so Hank, being the first one to draw blood here, and as we can see, he's adjusting the life totals uh, to uh, to thirty one rather than forty uh, or thirty nine. It would be, um, but uh, yeah. So so on. So it's over to Will now, by the looks of it, and he's not going to have too many cards uh, to play with. Two card hand here, I believe, with the art light sentinel, obviously eating up a little bit of that. Uh, but interesting to see why he played that so early and not not holding on to it. But um, but yeah, it's a it's a horrible card nonetheless. But obviously we're going to trigger Genesis here. We're going to be putting a figment into Soul, which means we get both of the triggers on Genesis to create a spectral shield and draw a card, which is pretty good. And the great thing about Genesis as well is it filters for, it filters for you as well. It filters a lot of things, and Will's just deciding to come in with a yellow War Tune Herald for eight because of the Pierce Reality, which is also giving it plus two as the first Illusionist attack. So pretty good, pretty strong coming in for eight. Uh, although Hank does pop it with a ninth blade of the Blood Oath, um, so that has been uh, has been phantasmed away. So uh, yeah, this is the thing. I think I think Hank does have 
the ability to interact on that side of the thing, uh, at that side of the uh, the game here, with a lot of poppers to prevent the massively huge wide turns that Prism can have access to, even in these sorts of builds, uh, it is pretty crucial. And obviously taking away the value that you get from Phantasm, because obviously they're massively above rate attacks. Uh, but uh, Hank's starting off his turn with a Rune Blood incantation to go up to one Rune Chant straight away after firing those other Rune Chants uh, last turn. But, uh, yeah, just a mainstay of Hank's decks, the Rune Blood incantations, constantly chanting away and getting those those Rune Chants in um, to, uh, to supplement his turns here. Um, but, uh, yeah, Hank's a big... Big Viserai fan. Full art Viserai uh, Marvel there. And obviously in his uh, little profile picture in the top left corner, he's extremely excited to be holding both a Viserai playmat and the Marvel as he represents the Rune Blade, the original Rune Blade in this league that means absolutely nothing whatsoever. But uh, yeah, both players really in the tank deciding how they're going to tackle this matchup. And I think it is going to be one of those matchups that will take a lot of time. You will need to make sure that you don't make any errors because it can go down to the wire here. Um, so uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how this how this one plays out with uh, with Hank drawing the first blood earlier with the rune chant that came through. Um, but the fact that Will has a Genesis on board and another Spectra, I think Will's ahead, even though the life. It's not even that different, really, because he's only lost one. But a big turn here, potentially from Hank. So starting off with Mordred Tide, and then he plays a Become the Arc Knight, which triggers Viserai to get an, uh, two rune chants off of one activation, one trigger off of Viserai. Uh, and he's discarding a Vexing Malice to the Become the Arc Knight, which means he can go and get another non-attack action card, because he's discarded an attack action. So he can go and get a non-attack action. Now, when we normally see Hank close off chains with non-attacks, normally it's things like Blessings of the Occult, Rune Blood Barrier, stuff that will just allow him to get a lot more rune chants out ASAP, or maybe even like a Read the Runes. Um, when he's closing his turns off with a non-attack action, it's going to be one of these big rune chant generators, um, just to give him that buffer for next turn, uh, and then obviously allow him to play things like you know, uh, the reduced rune chance for free. Although we can do that anyway right now with the with the free rune chance established on board. But um, but yeah, that, that, I think that's what's going to come out here. Blessing of the occult seems to be a seems to be a good one. Um, I think does that crack at the start of your turn or at the end of your turn? No, it's a, I can't remember. But he is get, getting a read the runes, so uh, that's going to come into his hand, I believe, and he can just play that now if he wants to to go up to uh, quite a lot of rune chants because of the Viserai and Mordred tied behind it. So that's another thing that's going to sort of explode his rune chants a bit further. So he should get five rune chants off of this. No. He'll get four off of Read the Runes because of Mordred. Then he'll get two off of Viserai. So he should get six. We should go up to nine rune chants here after this resolves. So that's pretty good value. Um, I think if the maths are correct, he should go up to nine rune chants after this. Um, so let me see if this is done correctly. Um, or, you know, correctly on my side of things. Should be nine, right? Yeah, it looks like he's pointing at Viserai, getting two rune chants from that as well, so it should be up to nine. So yeah, pretty good. Pretty good stuff. And uh, the great thing about Viserai in this matchup is obviously a lot of Will's things has ward. Like the mo the, the important stuff in, in Will's deck, the angels get him a lot of value and all of that sort of stuff. They all have ward. So if one damage sneaks through, he has to destroy the whole thing. Um, so, uh, so yeah, that the, the 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 rune chance could play a pivotal role in this matchup. Um, but it's over to Will's turn now. He's going to trigger the Genesis, uh, putting in a Herald of Ravages, I believe. So that's going to trigger both aspects of Genesis to create another Spectral Shield and draw a card. Um, and uh, yeah, just this engine is really popping off uh, for Will, just allowing him to find and create a lot of board state, a lot of advantage and filtering his cars to, for, for, for what he might want to see. I'm not sure what Will wants to try and do against Hank, um, but um, I think one of the main things is Hank's going to have a lot of poppers, and he can just con continuously build up the rune chance. So maybe trying to maybe trying to get something... What's the, I think there's an angel that gives, gives your opponents, or a figment at least, that gives your opponents things minus one permanently. That could be something good to do, perhaps, but 
Will is in the tank here, thinking about what how he wants to approach this scenario with the rune chance building up on the other side of the field now as well. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that's going to be a big issue, uh, I think, later on down the line, especially when you want to try and you know when he wants to try and establish the angels that, that will accrue a lot of value for him. The ward can be a big downside to that if you're getting pinged for a lot of one one arcane. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how he tackles that. But, uh, yeah, Will still deciding what he wants to do. Um, it looks like we're going to see... Oh, no. Another Genesis. Wow, this this could be... This could spell the end for Hank fairly quickly with another Genesis being established here and then following up with a Warmonger's diplomacy. Um, wow, okay. It's going to be interesting to see what, play, what the players pick here for this. Uh, I've, I think I remember flashing up or doing some graphics here with the players' choices, so we'll just have to wait and see to make sure that's made it onto the edit. There we go. Will's choosing war, and Hank is choosing peace. Um, so interesting, interesting decision. Um, the thing is, with this Viscerai deck, as we can see now, it's over to Hank's turn now. He's just generating another rune chant off of the rune blood incantation, bringing him up to ten. But Hank is, I think, Hank's pretty content with being peaceful. Um, he's happy to sit there and build up his rune chants um, to, to great effect and then use those rune chants at a later stage when things get dicey. Because um, at the moment, Will's presenting a lot of spectra, but not so much anything else. Um, so I think Hank can still take his time, because ultimately, I think those rune chants are going to tear away Will's board state. Um, albeit he's getting a lot of value out of the Spectra stuff at the moment. Hank still can use poppers to his advantage. He does, we have seen quite a few of those already. Um, and uh, starting off Hank's turn here with a Sonata Galaxia, um, you know, he, he's got he's got 10 rune chants on board here, so he can basically just go and search for anything he wants to with Sonata being reduced by 10 uh, because of each rune chant he has. Um, so we can go and search his deck for a rune blade aura that costs five and put it into the arena. Um, and he's going to go, wow, okay, he's going to go get Looming Doom. That is interesting. Okay, so I haven't seen this card at all in the league that means nothing so far. Looming Doom being fetched here off of the uh, off of the Sonata Galaxia. Um, so when Looming Doom enters, all of those rune chants that he's built up are going to transfer over to the Looming Doom, essentially. So he's going to, you're probably going to see him put all those dice onto the Looming Doom in a moment. Um, and at the beginning of each end phase that Hank has, he removes one of those counters and deals two arcane damage to any target of his choice, which is pretty sick, especially when the angels are established, because that just blows them up, because they have ward. Um, so the Looming Doom could be quite a key piece if this matchup is going to go long um so uh, so yeah and now he's playing another become the arc knight discarding the amplify the arc knight obviously because he's under the warmongers he's chosen peace um so he's making quite a lot of use out of the fact that he's under the warmongers peace for now he's just put, putting out a looming doom which is going to blast uh will for two damage at the end of the term the, the shields will eat it but um but yeah it's a good card to establish under warmongers and now he's playing the become the arc knight discarding the attack that he has in hand to go and search for another non-attack, which is probably just going to be more rune chant generation for now or later. Um, so still making the most out of, here we go, Blessing of the Occult, uh, which is going to uh, destroy and get three rune chants at the start of Hank's next turn. Um, pretty good pretty good turn under Warmonger's Peace uh, coming from Hank here. Um, so it's good to see. Um I think that's probably where, yeah, this doesn't have go again. So I think that's where Hank's turn will end. But, um, yeah, obviously at the end of, end of the turn as well, we should have a Looming Doom trigger, which will blast Will for two, which would eat up those shields unless he pitches to Arcane Barrier. But he's only got one Arcane Barrier on field at the moment. So it is a solid two from the Looming Doom. But obviously we're also going to get a Viscerai trigger as well from the Blessing of the Occult being played. Uh, so we are now on two rune chants from Viscerai after the Blessing has been played. And now uh, if Hank is going to go to the end step, Looming Doom will trigger and blast Will for two. Um, and that two solid Arcane with one Arcane Barrier out can be a little bit leaky if Will doesn't have the resources. Um, well, he won't have the resources because he's got Arcane Barrier one. So he can't stop it 
unless he's got shields and stuff out in play. But um, yeah, it's going to ping in for two. Uh, see how he deals with this. Does have one piece of null run out, but he does have the shields as well. So the shields could just eat this damage. And uh, I think it's a good thing that Hank did establish this Looming Doom. Because obviously, if Will chooses to put two... If Will chooses to to act on both of the Gen Genesis triggers, he's going to be able to get two shields per turn. Um, so the contingency there of Looming Doom just making sure that those shields just lose their value is a good play. I didn't even know Hank had this in his deck, Looming Doom, so it's pretty cool. But it's an alternate way to play the game, isn't it? If you're playing like this control sort of build up rune chance deck if you're going a long time and you need a grindy match looming doom could be the way to you know double the value out of your rune chance that you're getting making them two damage rather than one and it makes it more awkward with the uh with the with the arcane barrier as well because if they've only got one arcane barrier established you know it's doing two damage each time rather than one so they can't even stop it um but uh, yeah, I think he's he's triggering both Genesis triggers here, putting cards into his soul, drawing cards and creating shields. Uh, so he's back up to two shields now, drawing two cards, filtering his hand away. Um, so there is a huge engine on board for Will right now, and that's going to be hard for Hank to deal with um, because he has to attack S Spectra, which means his turn ends without things like Lead the Charge or Time Snap Potion to just have raw action points. It's it's hard to really deal with those things, um, but the thing that, that Hank does have going for him is the is the rune chance as well. So when he attacks, the rune chance will still pop. Um, so it's still that for Will to deal with as well, which counteracts his ward. Um, so it, that is a that is a thing that's going for Hank in this matchup. But uh, coming in with a war tune herald now for nine because of the Pierce reality. Um, so that's quite a large attack. Um, but again, it does have Phantasm, so Hank, if his hand composition is being nice to him, he might be able to just pop this as well, um, which would be great, because he's coming in for 9, nine damage for one resource, which is pretty strong. Um, but I think Hank would have popped it straight away if he did have a popper, so I'm not sure if he's going to have that popper by the looks of it, He's trying to calculate this as an actual block instead of just popping it. Otherwise, he probably would have popped it by now. Um, but yeah, still coming in for 9. If it hits, it goes into the soul as well. Just a very above-rate card, of course, because obviously it's a Illusionist Phantasm attack. A 1 for 7 is just pretty decent. But obviously, with the Pierce Reality behind it as well, coming in for 9 is just outrageous value. 1 for 9. Hank is having to deal with that right now with the fact of not having a popper in hand. That's a lot of damage coming through. But obviously, um, we haven't seen Will hit with a Herald yet, uh, which is pivotal to his, his game plan for establishing Angels on, on board. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how, how much Hank is willing to weather that on-hit storm of Prism establishing Angels as well, because that's another thing that he has to deal with. But I do think that uh, we do we do see a reduced rune chant cover up four of this, and Hank is going to take five, but obviously creating a rune chant off of the back of reduced rune chant. Uh, so he is going to take five, and we are going to see the first Prism uh, triggered ability here from uh, Awakener of Soul. So he's going to go and get a figment and put it into the arena. Uh, and this is where... The board, the board sort of establishment does start happening for the prison player, and uh, they do have a quite a toolbox -y element to the deck. You know, a lot of the figments come in and do stuff like one does arcane damage, one reduces your opponent's attacks to by minus one. I think when when the, their attacks when defending, there's one that gives you a ponder. Um, there's loads of other, there's loads of other cards in there. There's one that brings back something from the graveyard. I think um, there's quite a few different things that Will can access right now, but it's just depending on what he's feeling like the most valuable option is. And it is going to be the Rebirth, because we have seen an Arc Light Sentinel played already. Um, so going to get that Figment of Rebirth will then open up the ALS lock, especially with Genesis out on board as well. That is just going to be a nasty, nasty situation for Hank to try and get out of 
is the ALS lock, which is not very nice whatsoever. Um, and I don't know the intricacies of the lock, but it's basically you get to play ALS every single turn because you play it. Um, yeah, I think you play it, you then attack with the Avalon to get the ALS back on top of your deck, then you draw it, so you've always got access to it. But here we see the Imperium Rapture being used for Prism's ability to flip over the Angel of Rebirth, which is going to start getting back your um, your Arclight Sentinels. So this is not going to be nice. Um, Hank has to really deal with this Angel as soon as possible. Um, and the great thing is, is that Looming Doom can fire two damage at any target which is absolutely crucial for this to taking this down um so uh, so yeah that that's pretty cool um you can't defend for your allies either so if uh, hank goes in to attack with uh, a reaping blade and then blasts him with the lo uh, looming doom uh, he can actually kill angels that way uh, as well um, so that's pretty cool but as we can see here avalon is going to be getting back um arc light sentinel so this is not a nice loop for any player to be in to be honest but i think hank does have the tools on fit on field with his rune chance his looming doom and his just hand and his sword that he can he, he might be able to get around this to be honest obviously there's still two spectral shields out in play at the moment uh, but uh, I believe, yeah, that that obviously that dice is that dice is on Avalon right now. So she has attacked. He's got back the ALS, I believe, and uh, Hank has in, having to deal with four damage here from the Angel. Um, but uh, but yeah, we need to get rid of that lock straight away as soon as possible because that's gonna that's gonna be detrimental to the game. But yeah, Hank's just gonna choose to take four damage, uh, go down to thirty one apiece, and I believe that's Will's turn over. Um, so uh, Hank's Rune Blood Incantation doesn't have any more verse counters on it, so that's just going to go away. That's what he's doing right now. And the um, Blessing of the Occult should blow up now as well and give him three more Rune Chants, so that'll be pretty good, I believe. Could be wrong. I think it is at the start of the turn, isn't it? Blessing of the Occult. Or is it at the end? I don't remember. It looks like Will is deciding whether he wants to respond to the Runeblood incantation blowing up at the start of Hank's turn. So I think that's what he is signaling signaling now. Like, you know, do I want to play this card in Arsenal, etc.? Um, I believe that's what's happening right now. I cannot remember. But yeah, that's it. So it looks like the uh, Blessing of the Occult is going to trigger. So he's going to go up to six Rune Chants now. And yeah, over to Hank to play his turn. Um, but I'm pretty sure he is thinking, I need to get rid of this Avalon, because Avalon is the thing that when it attacks, you can banish a card from your soul, and if you do, you put a yellow card from your grave on top of your deck, which is going to be the ALS. So that loop is just absolutely disgusting, so you need to get rid of Avalon ASAP, otherwise you're just gonna, none of your attacks will matter whatsoever. Um, so yeah, it's not a, nice, not a nice spot to be in, especially with the absolute engine that Will has already established with the two Genesis on board, and the Pierce Reality, which obviously helps the uh, Heralds hit as well with the plus two. So, yeah, it's going to be um, going to be a tough uphill battle for Hank here. But luckily, the Looming Doom is still on board with nine counters on it. So that's going to be popping two two things every turn. Um, well, two damage every turn, shall I say. But uh, Hank is using his Tunic resource here to play another Blessing of the Occult. But this doesn't have go again. All right, so he's not going to play anything after that. Um, now, as we can see, Hank does miss a Looming Doom trigger, but it is remembered soon. Um, so uh, I can't remember when it is remembered, but um, but yeah, it looks like we are going to see a reminder on here that uh, Looming Doom should have shot Will for two damage. Um, but, uh, but before we do that, of course, that might be established later. He is going to be uh, genesising, genesising once to get a spectral shield and a card draw. And he's going to be genesising again to get another spectral shield and a card draw. Um, so this is pretty disgusting, what Will is being able to do right now. This is This is one hell of an engine. absolutely outrageous so 
It's going to be a pretty nasty... Uh, oh, here we go. Here's the uh, the Looming Doom. So Will's just basically taking off two of the shields, because that would have happened. Um, I mean, Hank could choose to fire two damage at the uh, Avalon, but he, he decided to just play the Blessing of the Occult, or maybe he forgot that you could do that, but I'm not entirely sure. But obviously the, the, the Looming Doom has resolved now. Um, and Will is just going to have a big crackback. He's going to establish another Arc Light Sentinel. Okay. All right. So, again, Hank is going to have to attack into the Arc Light Sentinel no matter what. So it's going to be interesting to see how he plays around that. Uh, and that is just... Uh, Will ending his turn now. Obviously, Hank's Blessing of the Occult is going to pop, so he's back up to nine rune chance over there. And he's going to play a Vexing Malice. Okay. All right. So that's going to go into the Arclight Sentinel. Interesting. And then he's also going to fire nine rune chance as well. So this is the thing, right? Will may have Arclight Sentinel established, but we've got three instances of damage coming in here. We've got the physical attack itself, which is being cancelled out by Arclight Sentinel. Um, actually, no, I think all the I think all of that text is being blanked, right? So Vexing Malice and the arcane damage that it deals is being blanked because of Spectra, but then we still have nine rune chants coming in off of the back of that declared attack, I believe. Yeah, because it's on attack rather than on resolution of attack. Um, so the rune chance would go first, um, and then obviously the vexing malice would then just spectra away the arclight sentinel afterwards, I believe. So Will still has to deal with nine instances of one arcane here, which can clear the shields. It can also clear the avalon as well, um, which is which is the which is the saving grace that Hank has in this matchup against things with ward. And as you can see here, Will is absolutely respecting that. He is pitching away everything to make sure that no rune chants go through. Um, it looks like two shields are going to pop as a result of the looming doom. Um, so, uh, so that's so that's that. But still, Will having to respect all of those rune chants there in that turn means he's not going to be able to do anything on his next turn because he's pitched away his whole hand to stop all the rune chants. But that is the power that Viserai does have over certain turn cycles against Prism, because you can just throw a load of stuff, whether it's Spectra or not, at um, at Prism, and they have to deal with the, all of the instances of one Arcane, uh, which is the which is the issue. So yeah, pretty pretty good stuff. Uh, and this leaves Hank with a window to actually try and kill the Angel here, because you can throw the Reaping Blade to deal three damage. And then you can use the Looming Doom to do two damage to the Angel. So Hank can actually kill Avalon this turn, which is pretty sick. Because although the Reaping Blade doesn't have go again, the Looming Doom is just at, end of, at the end phase trigger. It deals two damage. So you're effectively getting two attacks in, only with one action point, basically, against the Angel. Um, so that's one saving grace. Hank can look to clear Avalon this turn if needed. Um, and he's pitching a Slogism, interesting, to be able to attack into i believe this is the angel i think this is the uh, i think this is what he's doing now uh because i think he realizes that that's what he needs to do and i flashed up avalon here on my editing that i did a while ago so i believe that's what's happening here we go three damage on the angel and then looming doom is going to blast avalon for another two damage and that's going to kill it that is going to kill it because it can do two damage to any target so that is pretty good. Yep, there we go. We see Avalon getting at the hell out of there as well. So that's pretty pivotal because that was the thing that was enabling the uh, Arclight Sentinel lock, which is not a place that you want to be in. Um, so Looming Doom doing some very, very good work here on Hank's side of the field, just clearing angels, clearing shields, sort of culling the inherent engine that Will has access to with the double Genesis on board here. And that's exactly what he's doing now. He's choosing to resolve one Genesis. Uh, will he resolve the second? Depends what your hand composition is right is like as well, right? Because you don't have to use it. You don't have to do it. 
it just says at the start of the turn you may put a card from your hand but it looks like he is he is doing that right now he's getting another spectral shield and drawing another card just filtering his hand and just uh and just making sure that he can really take make the most out of this out of this double genesis engine pretty spicy stuff um but uh yeah prism is very very relevant and it looks like he's just going to be coming out with wow okay and invoke Soraya. Transform target spectral shield you control into Soraya. I have never seen this resolve before. Interesting. Yeah, this this was from Dynasty. This was a this is an interesting design because obviously this is Soraya Archangel of Knowledge, which transformed from a spectral shield, which is very unique. Um, so it looks like Will Will's actually leaning over on the camera to understand what this does because I'm not sure if he's ever played it before. Um, well, he probably has played it before, but it's not something you see often. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, as a once per turn action, you can pay two and attack. And whenever Soraya attacks, you may banish a light card from your hero's soul. And if you do, it deals one arcane damage to any target. And it says whenever Soraya deals damage, you gain that much life. Um, so, so yeah, he's going to be pinging for one and then coming in for four. So, potential... Uh, Hank's just taken that one arcane by looks of it, so Will's gone up by one. Um, but... Um, but yeah, so uh, Hank hasn't really Hank hasn't adjusted the life totals here, but Will should be back up to thirty two with Hank on thirty, uh, and now he's got four damage to contend with, which he is going to cover up with a reduced to rune chance. That's fair enough. He's not letting ha uh, Will gain another four life here, luckily, and he's going to uh, create a rune chant off of the back of that. But he does have to pay for that reduced to rune chant because he doesn't have any other rune chance established at the moment. Uh, and wow, okay. Uh, Will is following up with a Herald of Erudition for seven because of Pierce Reality. And uh, luckily, Hank does have a popper with Runic Reclamation, with that being a seven attack there. Um, so as we mentioned earlier, Hank does have a lot of poppers and uh, at the right times as well. So that's pretty good. Um, so I'd love to see that. Just cancelling out a lot of the value there um, from the uh, from the uh, from the big phantasm attacks, with the phantasm actually being a relevant downside in this matchup. And here we go. Hank is coming in with a reaping blade that is for one and three because of the rune chant that he established off of D React last turn. Um, so uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's one damage that's going to be soaked up by the spectral shield, and the reaping blade is being. Uh, put on Soraya, and then the Looming Doom is finishing it off yet again. Um, so that little combo there, the uh, Reaping Blade plus the Looming Doom, is clearing Angels fast. Um, so Will has to really respect the fact that, you know, if he's got a window, Hank is going to take out those Angels, because you've only got one figment of each type, because they're legendary, right? So you're not going to be able to cycle those things back into your deck unless you are running things like Remembrance or what have you. But I don't think that is the case with Will's deck. Um, but uh, regardless, he is going to activate Genesis just the once this turn, I believe. And then come in with a Wartune Herald for 9 because of the Pierce reality. So again, another big valuable attack here from uh, from Will. Sending in 9 damage off of the Wartune Herald with 1 resource. Um, so that's pretty big. Um PS Reality really, really puts in some work. It really does. But it's not it's just one of those cards that you don't really want to have to clear if you if you've got more room. You just want to do your, your deck stuff, right? You don't want to waste it clearing spectras. Um so I think Hank is doing the right thing at the moment, uh relying on his poppers to deal with the fact of the buffed phantasms rather than actually having to waste cards on Spectra. Um but luckily Hank does have a weapon. So, you know, as long as he can just hang in there and keep swinging his weeping blade, targeting the pivotal angels and then popping the spectra of his blade every now and again, this could be this could be a one that Hank can w wangle his way through. Um, but, uh, yeah, very, very patient play, very calculated play. And, um, you know, as, as happy as go lucky as Hank is, he knows what he's doing, I think, on this deck. Um, and, uh, yeah, we have seen a few victories for Hank. Well, I think maybe just maybe just the one victory in the league that means nothing so far. Similar to my record, actually. But there we go. Uh, I'm not going to talk any more about that. But uh, the Balance of Justice being used to block here for uh, two and a uh, Arc Light Ascendancy for three. So that's five being blocked at the moment. So he's going to take five. 
Oh, okay, and then a sink below. So that is covering nine. Pretty good. Pretty good stuff. Not much you can really do about that, by the looks of it. All right, cool. So that is done, I believe. So that's uh, that's fully blocked. Don't know why you were signalling two. But uh, there we go. Um, but so yeah, it's fully blocked. And then obviously Will uh, established a passing mirage after the uh, the Herald, which did have go again because he pitched a yellow from Luminaris. Um, so uh, so yeah, the passing mirage now now established as well. So four Spectras on board. Um, so he's not lacking in that department, that's for sure. There's a lot of Spectrals up at the moment. A lot of Spectras up. Uh, but Hank is using his Tunic resource here. And he's following that up with a Mordred Tide into a Vexing Malice, which is going to trigger Viserai. So he's going to be able to get two uh, rune chants off the back of that. And then Vexing Malice is just coming in, going to come in at the Passing Mirage, um, which I believe is why I'm floating this Passing Mirage up underneath Will's picture. Because, um, yeah, why not just use a blue attack on a Spectra, get it out of the way. Because that loses and can't gain Phantasm is a a big a big roadblock for Hank's defenses, so he needs to really clear that so he can keep just keep popping the crucial things as and when they come in, and then just building up the rune chants and then swinging the sword and then firing back and leaking damage through the rune chants, etc., etc. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I believe that is what Hank is targeting right now is the passing mirage, which would probably would be the best thing to do, and that's exactly what he's doing. He's getting rid of the uh, the phantasma fire, which fan de phantasmifies things basically that's what i was trying to get at um but uh yeah good stuff by hank and obviously the looming doom will also trigger now as well which will blast will for two which will clear his spectral shield and leak one unless he chooses to null rune um so he's going to take one and lose the spectral shield um so that's uh so that's all good and hank's just going to draw up and pass over to will um, so uh, obviously a couple of Genesis triggers here if he chooses to use them. I imagine he probably will do to get some value. Because that has a lot of value. Yep, yeah, he's going to trigger Genesis. He's going to put a something or other into his soul. Just just, just deciding right now what he's going to do. It is a Herald of Protection Yellow, I believe, which is going to trigger the, uh, the Spectral Shield generation and the draw off of Genesis. Which is pretty good. And she's going to come out, uh, well, he's going to come out with a Herald of Triumph. Um, so, obviously, uh, you won't be able to pop this, because obviously when this attack, uh, when this attacks, attack action cards have minus one while defending this. But he finds a seven attack, which still has Phantasm, which still, sorry, which still destroys Phantasm, even with the minus one. But Will does have a Celestial Reprimand in hand to give it minus two. Wow, okay, so it goes down to four. Obviously, it goes minus one from uh, high, uh, Triumph, and then minus two from Reprimand, so the Runic Reclamation is no longer a popper, and it's going to leak uh, some damage here. It's going to leak five damage, I think. Yeah, it's going to leak five damage from that. That's uh, Will has had a few crucial Celestial Reprimands in this league, and uh, he's going to, because of that Herald hitting, he's going to activate Prism. Um, so he's going to go and get a figment and put it into the arena. So that's pretty good. He's going to get a Herald of Ravagers. So that's going to come in and deal one arcane damage to Hank, which he's not going to respect whatsoever. And obviously this one turns into Sekem, which I believe Will will probably just transform it straight away. Uh, and the great thing, the great thing is as well now. Um, now Hank can just fire his swords and his looming dooms and his rune chants at the angels if he wants to, uh, and just clear those off most of the time. But yeah, Will's going to use the Imperium Rapture to activate Prism's ability for free, which will transform the Figment of Ravages into the Sekem Archangel of Ravages. Um, so that's pretty good. And then he's going to establish a Warmongers after that as well, with the exact same 
diplomacy being decided with Hank going for the peace and Will going for the war. So Prism is the aggressor here. She's all war. The Rune Blades only want peace, it seems. Um, they just want to sit there in their demonic in their demonistry and just room blood incantations all day long. That's all they want to do. So they're peaceful creatures, heart, the Rune Blades. Just want to sit there and do their incantations in peace. And then just do a looming doom at the very end there. So two damage. So two damage coming in at will here. So he's losing one of his shields and one life. Going down to 30, I believe. No, not going down to 30. He's staying on 31. Must have missed something there. Did he AB it? No. I'm not sure what happened there. The maths isn't... isn't. Well, it's all staying the same, so I'm going to trust the uh, the players here and what they're doing. But, uh, yes, that's it, really. And uh, Will is just establishing what he wants to do with his war. Because I believe Hank just played the Rune Blood Incantation and passed. So, yeah, it's over to Will now, and he's under the war because of warmongers. Just counting how many cards that he has in his soul right now. Been an interesting game so far. And obviously he's just deciding what he wants to do with Genesis. Uh, so he's going to create another shield and draw a card. Pretty good stuff. Choosing to put a... Uh, I'm not sure what that card is there that he put in. And he's just going to come in with a Red Herald of Protection. Which is actually coming in for nine because of Pierce Reality. So, just going to be popped by a down and dirty from Hank. Now, that's the thing. Pierce Reality, as good as it is in matchups that don't have many Phantasms poppers, it's not really doing much in this match because Hank does have a lot of um, a lot of. Uh, poppers but as we can see here he's popped it he's used his boots to gain his action point back and now he's coming in with a phantasmoclasm for 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 nine damage so another big on rate attack here um and uh they're <laughs> choosing to put the down the other down and dirty on the bottom of the deck so hank can draw so yeah so so the phantasmoclasm doing exactly what it needs to do is finding that popper and putting it on the bottom of the deck and then allowing the, the the other player to draw a card. So it looks like Hank has not drawn another popper off of the down and dirty that Will put back, puts to the bottom of his deck. Um, so it might look like he has to try and soak up some of this damage now. Coming in for nine is quite a lot of damage. But yeah, don't really see Phantasmoclasm too much. Well, I haven't seen it personally quite a lot because obviously I don't watch or spectate or play much Prism at all. So I'm not sure whether that's a, a card that Prism uses often. But uh, it looks like Hank is just going to block six here and take three from the raw damage of Phan uh, Phantasmoclasm. Doesn't do anything else apart from the look at your hit, look at the hero's hand. Um, but yeah, Rune Blood Incantation is going to going to trigger at the start of Hank's turn to get another Rune Charm. And uh, it'll be interesting to see what Hank does now in this situation. And that is just going to be swinging the Reaping Blade for three and three. So three instances of one and then one instance of three. Obviously, that's just coming straight at the face right now. Uh, oh, no, sorry. No, it's coming at Genesis. So one of the Genesis is going to die. And then he's going to have to deal with three Rune Chants here. Three instances of one, which he can do. He can pitch away... To save his life from the rune chance there. And I've got another reminder on here that Hank's missed another Looming Doom trigger. But it is spotted again very, very soon. And as we can see here, a Passing Mirage. Another one is being established. Absolutely outrageous. Another Passing Mirage. That's another thing that Hank's going to have to deal with. Because obviously that's one of the biggest things that's getting away getting in the way of the potential defensive value that Hank has in his deck here with a lot of poppers. He needs to clear those passing mirages as soon as they come out because they are 
one of the things that can that can really just that that's one of the things that you that you fear right as a as a as a, as a prism if you want to be doing multiple things your on your turn is big attacks that pop your things so passing mirages are very very crucial but luckily hank does have enough room at the moment still to try and get that out of the way so it's going to be interesting to see what what hank does target here obviously the genesis is still there the pierce reality hasn't isn't really doing too much it has leaked a little bit of damage here and there where he hasn't had the poppers but uh, I think in most hands, Hank is going to be able to throw a popper in front of something. So the passing Mirage is probably the thing that needs to go at this moment in time. Especially with with Hank's deck composition as to what we've seen so far. Um, that's probably the best thing to do. But Genesis is still out as well. Genesis is still getting him a lot of value um, as well here. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. But I think Pass and Mirage is the is the thing to do. But yeah, just uh just showing us how how many decision points you have to really think about. And here we go, here's the the, the looming doom trigger um being resolved again. Um and it's quite relevant as well, because obviously it stops damage going through. But I think the damage isn't really going to matter this turn anyway because of the fact that I think he's just want to get rid of that Spectra. Um, or not. He's playing a Slogism. All right. Okay. Wow. All right. Activating Tunic to get another resource. What could this be now then? Oh, right. Okay. Amplify the Art Knights. That's going to cost... One less because of the rune chance. So it's going to cost two. He's got a tunic resource floating. So it should just cost him one card to play. Uh, and there it is. Read the runes. So yeah, okay. All right then. So you've got to Amplify the Art Knight coming in for one rune chant. Obviously, there's going to be another rune chant off the back of the Viscerai trigger here. But one rune chant and then 12? Is it one and 12? I think it might be. Slogism is plus six, isn't it? And uh, there's another reminder here saying Will is saying that he should be at 29. Correct us down below. So I'm not sure what where that other one was missed, but Will is saying he should be at 29 or something. So I've just I've just believed the players here in the post production and said yeah okay whatever Will you're at 29, whatever you say. But I believe I'm not sure what's going on there. But this is um this is so Will's taken the one damage from the rune chant. And now he's having to deal with 12 physical from the Amplify the Art Knight. So that is pretty big. It's a pretty big attack. It's a pretty big attack. 12 damage from Slogism. Don't see Slogism much either. Old school card from Welcome to Wraith. Quite costly, but obviously... Pretty big. And what else is big? A soul shield. So blocking six. So it looks like he's going to take six. Go down to 23. Uh, so a soul shield coming in quite handy there where um, just basically just cancelling out the slogism with his own uh, six value card. And obviously Looming Doom is going to trigger at the end of the turn here as well. So that should pop Will down to 21. Unless he decides to Arcane Barrier. But the Arcane Barrier is only going to count for one because obviously he's only got one instance of Arcane Barrier whereas this coming in for two... Uh, so yeah, going down to 21 here. So 21 apiece right now. Will hasn't established any more angels on board yet. Um, but he's going to trigger Genesis to get another Spectral and draw. Now, Prism's soul is looking pretty pretty big. So I think Will might have to be careful with how many cards he's putting into soul and what he wants to draw off of those things, as well as create the Spectral Shield. But every card that he puts in his soul, he's not going to be able to get back. He's not going to be able to play it again. Now, there are certain things that obviously are fueled with cards from the soul, of course. You do need some aspect of cards in there, of course, to do some big, valuable things. But you do lose a lot of cards as well to that process. So it's going to be interesting to see where that goes, if anything. But Herald of Protection Blue coming in for seven here because of the Pierce Reality. So if there is no popper in hand, this is where you can start to get a lot of value from Pierce Reality. Especially on these blues and yellows as they come back round. It is one of those things that the longer it stays around, the more value you're going to see as you get round, you know, get round your deck to the blues and yellows that you pitched earlier. 
all those Phantasm attacks going to come in for plus two more is pretty big, making the yellows and blues even more... Um, well, yeah, on, on the same level as the reds, right? Because you're getting plus two. So, yeah, sometimes better than the reds if they're a yellow, etc. But um, sinking below to block four, and he is going to sink a card by the looks of it. So he's blocking four at the moment. This is coming in for seven. So does he have another card in hand? Does he have another D-react? Or is he going to be taking some damage here? No, he does have another reduce. That's pretty good. So the reduce costs nothing because he had a rune chant established already. And that's going to create another rune chant off of the back of reduce. So he's going to have two rune chants going to next turn. And he has fully covered up that Herald of Protection Blue, uh, which was obviously getting the plus two from the Pierce Reality. But pretty good stuff. Both players have had some pretty key, crucial cards when they needed them. Um, and uh, yeah, this is making out for an interesting, grindy game here. And Hank's going to be establishing another Runeblood incantation. Pitching a Arknight Shard. All right. So he's going to create a, 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 a Rune Chant off of the Arknight Shard itself. So that's pretty cool. And he's got two floating. Obviously, the, rune, the incantations do have go again. So he's just going to swing his blade in for three and four. He's targeting the passing mirage. That's a, that's a good idea, I think. Get that out of the way. And then obviously the four rune chants are coming through off the back of that rune blade swing. This is the this is the, the thing as well about heroes that have weapons. Obviously, I play a ranger quite a lot, so it just feels bad to have to shoot your arrows into things that have spectra especially because you lose your turn, but Hank's pretty well set up to deal with not only Spectra with sw swinging a weapon, but the rune chant to come off the back of it really, really do pose an issue for Will's game plan with a lot of the the valuable stuff being around Ward. Um, so so I think Hank does really, really does stand a chance in this game uh, with now taking the life lead against Will, uh, 21 to 18. Um, so, and... He's going to have a Looming Doom at the end of this turn as well. So another two damage is going to ping over to Will's Way. But that Looming Doom is going to die at the end of the next turn now. So he's got no more uh, Verse Counters on that. Is it Verse Counter or Doom Counter? I think it's just called Doom Counter, isn't it? Yeah, Doom uh, Doom Counters. Yeah, I should, should read the card, explains the card. But there we go. Another two damage down, uh, through to Will. Now on 16 life with Hank on 21. And it's now over to Will. Uh, with only two Spectras left on board here. He is going to trigger Genesis, putting in another Wartune held into Soul. Which allows him to Spectral Shield and go get a uh, draw a card. Another thing as well that Will has not been doing is been using Prism's ability when the Genesis, when the Heralds go in from Genesis. Um, I believe you can still search for a Figment when that happens, but he has not been doing that. Uh, whether that's out of choice or whether just out of knowledge, I don't know. Um, but I believe you can still search for figments when things, when heralds go into soul from Genesis. Or is it just... I don't know, I think maybe... No, I think it's when it's only during an action phase, isn't it? I think you have to... Your, I think the things have to go into your soul during the action phase and the, the Genesis is not an action phase. That's probably where I'm going wrong there. So maybe that's the case. I think that is the case. So my bad. But yeah, Herald of Protection coming in for nine here because of the Pierce reality. Hank is blocking with Spellbound, which I think is only one block on the Blade Break. And then an Unmovable blocking for eight because it's obviously played from Arsenal. Wow, okay. That was well positioned. Well positioned. Uh, and then he's just going to follow that up with a Herald of Ravages for six. And that is being popped by a Runic Reclamation. All right. Wow. These defences of Hank are really holding up here. This is this is pretty remarkable. This is pretty remarkable. I had to take a step away from my seat there because I was like, wow, another popper, another ru Runic Reclamation. This is pretty sick to see. The Defiance of Hank's Viscerai here, as he ticks up his tunic to one, ticks down his rune blood incantation to get another rune chant. So many rune chants coming out. Viscerai's just sat here singing a song for us all. 
What a great game we have on our hands here. Really interesting. Really interesting matchup. Hank is in the tank. And he's just going to be swinging his Reaping Blade for one and three. Probably trying to clear one of these Genesises. Yet yeah, that's exactly what he's doing. He's using the Reaping Blade to just get Genesis out of the way. And the Rune Chant is going to pop off the last shield. There's not going to be much more shield generation from the Genesis now. Um, so, uh, so yeah, just Hank just using this time while he's got a little bit of a life lead to just clear off the board a little bit more. The Pierce Reality isn't really something he's really taking much notice of because he has so many poppers. So the plus two doesn't really matter in those moments. And here comes another one. Another Herald for seven dominate. So this is where you need a popper because these cards are very good. And obviously he's pitched a soul shield as well, which is yellow, which means this does have go again. So it's seven go again dominate if it hits draw two cards phantasm. So I'm hoping that Hank, uh, I shouldn't really be hoping, but uh, for, the, for the game's sake, this could be cool if Hank does have another popper here. And he does with a ninth blade of the blood oath coming in for nine so even if Will has something like Celestial Reprimand or something that reduces the attack, Ninth Blade is a big birthday cake of a card. But ha uh, but Will is using his Phantasmal Footsteps now to gain back the action point to maybe do something else after this. And that's exactly what he's doing. So I'm interested to see what, what the follow-up is now. Or maybe he was just filtering a card, filtering cards out of his hand with the with the phantasmal footsteps. Um, but yeah, over to over to Hank now, who is going to trigger, uh, or should be triggering the rune blood incantation, unless he's done that already. I must have missed that, perhaps. I'm not sure what's going on right now. Maybe Will is deciding whether he wants to respond to the rune blood incantation trigger. I think that's what we're seeing right now. I think I might have just missed the Hank putting the dice on the rune blood thing there. So I think it looks like looks like Will is deciding whether he wants to play something at instant speed after the rune blood incantation or before the rune rune blood incantation resolves on the on the on the on the sort of start phase. The beginning of the action phase. Okay, cool. All right, so yeah, that's fine. So uh, Hank's going to play a Sonata Galaxia. Um, so Hank can pretty much go get anything he wants with this card. Um, it's reduced by one because of the rune chant. Yeah, so it's reduced by one, and he's pitched four, so he should have one floating. Yeah, so he can go and get a two cost. Uh, so he can go and get a two cost, um, two cost aura with uh, the Sonata Galaxia. And I believe that just, I think that's Blessing of the Occult he might look for. Uh, I can't, can't think of any other auras that he might want to get at this point. Just something that spews out rune chance. And that's exactly what he's going to get. So at the start of his next turn, he's just going to blow up. That's just going to blow up and give him three rune chants. Um, so, uh, so yeah, that's going to be cool. And he's probably going to play this now as well. So he's going to get another Viscerai trigger as well. Um, so obviously the Blessing of the Occult goes to hand. And then with the one floating, he's going to be able to play the Blessing and then trigger Viscerai to go up to two rune chants. And then obviously, uh, and then obviously get the Blessing next turn. But uh, yeah, establishing rune chants, getting those rune chants out is going to be key to prop to ending this game for ha for Hank, I think. Oh no, sorry, the Snarter Galaxia just puts it into play, doesn't it? So yeah, you don't get the Viseroid trigger on that. Uh, but uh, the Reaping Blade is coming in at Pierce Reality, so that is all the Spectra is cleared, and uh, the one damage coming through um, on the on the Arcane. I think was just soaked up there by by something, perhaps, or was he taking it? I don't know. No, he's pitching for it. There we go. He's no no rune gloves. There we go. That's for the rune chant. 
Uh, and now he's going to play an arc like Sentinel at the end of his turn, or the end of Hank's turn. And it looks like Will's just going to have to Arsenal and pass after this, unless he's got, yeah, just Arsenaling and passing here. Um, that arc like Sentinel is just going to hang around, waiting for another attack to go into it. But uh, again, in these situations, Hank can just sit pretty. He's going to establish one rune chant from the incantation and another three from the blessing. So he's going to go up to four. And he still has his turn to play here. So that's the beauty of the rune chants, right? You can still swing your sword, get rid of the spectral stuff, but then uh, you've got rune chants coming off the back of it. And that's exactly what Oath of the Art Knight is going to do here. It's going to bring him up to five rune chants. And it's going to buff up his Reaping Blade to a plus four. Uh, sorry, to four damage on the attack. That's not really going to matter if he targets the Arc Light. But still, it's the five rune chance off of the back of the attack, which are going to matter to Will here in the end stages of the game. It looks like Hank is just yeah holding back on the on the pitch there, but yeah, the, the the Reaping Blade is going to be targeting the Arclight Sentinel, and obviously we've got the five rune chance off of the back of that attack, even though it doesn't resolve, coming in first at Will's face. So five instances of one, um, which is pretty relevant. Still quite a lot of damage coming in here, and hard to really get rid of. Um, so he's going to be pitching a Genesis to the Null Rune. So I think he still has to pitch three more to fully cover this. Looks like he's just deciding whether he should be pitching or not. It's a tough spot to be in, but he is gonna okay, he's gonna take all the damage from the rune chance, and obviously the reaping blade is just gonna get rid of the arc like sentinel. And uh, I think I think Hank's pretty happy with that, right? Ten life differential now between the two. Um, and Hank's going to draw up, and obviously it's over to Will's turn now with a five card hand. Eleven plays twenty one here. Prism going into Viserai. Will is going to be starting off with a Herald of Erudition. This is a good card to start with. Five, dominate, go again. If it hits, draw two cards. Now, Hank does still have the grasp out. Um, so he can block with grasp and one card from hand to stop this from happening. Because this is dominated, so it means that Hank can't block with more than one card from hand. Uh, and there's obviously still an Arsenal card as well. We have seen a lot of D-Reacts be played, so maybe that is a D-React sitting there as well. Um, Will is... I'm not sure what he was doing there. Uh, he has got two cards in hand, though, as we can see, uh, and one in Arsenal. Um, but, uh, yeah, if this, if this hits, it's going to draw draw Will two cards, and uh, obviously it's going to have go again as well because of the fact that uh, he's pitched a yellow. He's pitched another Genesis over there, obviously, which means that, obviously, uh, Luminaris will turn on your, um, your go-agains, on your Heralds and your Angels. So yeah, Hank's going to be in the tank thinking about how to block this. But he can, on the surface, or oh, he can pop it. You can pop it with an Amplify the Arc Knight. That's what he can do. Interesting. Right, okay, as an instant, we're seeing the Halo be popped here. So he's going to destroy that and then put a card from your hand into your soul. And if it's a light card, draw a card. So he's going to put a Herald into his soul he's going to draw a card and then he's going to trigger prism's ability okay interesting and he's getting the one that gives him minus one. Oh wow okay and I, I guess he can do that so he's going to take two he can do that because obviously this is during the action phase he's just used he's just used his his, his halo at instant speed there Oh, this could be punishing now. 
So Hank's gone for the Hank's gone for the I'm going to end your turn with Phantasm play rather than I'm going to try and block five, and this could be a big swing now as a result. Wow. Okay. I mean, did would we would we have known that Will could have done that? I guess you probably could have known that 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 could be an outcome here to get the 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 the, the figment of triumph to 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 make sure that your Her your herald of erudition hits. I mean, if if Hank if Hank had blocked with his grasp and the become the arc uh, the amplify the arc line instead, could that have been a relevant block instead of a non relevant block? Even with the halo. Wow. Okay, that's an interesting decision point, and one that could potentially change the game here at the very end with Will on eleven. Um. Wow. Okay. Very interesting. Very interesting. Now with two figments on board now as well. It's pretty good stuff. Oh, wow, he's got a Celestial Cataclysm. So this costs nothing to play. Because he's got a stack of things in his soul. Seven go again. And now he's blocking with his grasp. Damn. That does not feel good. Another Celestial Cataclysm. Holy hell. Another seven. And this is where your stack of cards under your soul is really helping you. My god. Another seven go again. Jeez. He's got another follow-up after this as two, uh, as this as well. He's got one card in hand, one card in Arsenal still after this. This is an absolute swing back from Will. Blocking for six. Blocking for six of two ascendances. One's, one's going to go through. Put Hank to 13. And oh my god. Another Celestial Cataclysm. Are you kidding me? Holy hell. Holy hell. Hank's just taken the damage. Wow. That is... All of this from that... From that figment of triumph coming out from the Halo. Wow. Okay. I I'm really interested to see... If Hank had blocked with his grasp and one card from hand, could that have changed the entire game here at the end? That is mental. All of this is off the halo. That is ridiculous. Jesus. What a turnaround. Wow, okay. And now he's going to use Imperium Rapture to turn one of the turn into Soraya, turn the um one of the one of the things I I've, I just I've missed that figment being played. I was too concerned about what else was going on here. Uh, so Soraya is now established, and that's going to be when that attacks, banish a card, draw two. I think this is game. I think this is game. Draw two cards, go again because this is the first angel, right? Hank goes down to two. Will can now follow this up with something else as well, maybe another herald. A Herald of Protection for two... For, yeah, Hank has just taken the damage. Wow! Holy hell! That turn, that last turn was mental. And there's Will just fanning out his deck saying, I don't have many cards left. Wow. Wow-wee. What a game. What a game. Jesus. Okay, well, that was that was pretty crazy. I mean, I thought Hank had a really, really good chance of staying into that game to the end there, and especially after seeing how many cards Will had left in his deck. Could that have been different? If Hank had blocked with his grasp for two and a card from hand, which was the Amplify the Arc Knight for three, you know, he would have popped it anyway if he just played it safe and blocked with the grasp and the Amplify the Art Knight, but in those moments you think, right, okay, I don't have to use my grasp here. I can just block with the Amplify the Art Knight and pop it and carry on and keep the grasp, but that was not the case. Halo basically says, I can go and make anything a non-popper if if you're on the defence. Yeah, that's, what, that's the thing you have to remember. That's one thing all of us have to remember is the power of Halo in those moments. That is absolutely... Pivotal 
in that turn there. That was absolutely crazy. Well played by both players. Hank, I thought you did a fantastic job. And I actually thought you was you was gonna you was gonna grind it out at the end there. You got a lot of value in that mid mid range mid range battle. You got out of the ALS lock as well. Um, really massively played. Very very patient on the deck. Very very good. Will just had a tricky part at the end there to to really do Hank over at the very end, which was uh, which was masterful. And those three celestial cataclysms in a row. I mean that is just madness. But um, wow. Decent game, really, really decent game, and it's not really the not really the sort of illusionist match that you'd expect because although Hank was popping spectres and losing his turns as a result, the rune chants were also flowing over the top to deal extra points of value, blowing up angels. Looming Doom was targeting angels as well at the same time. Really, really interesting matchup. Really, really good, and I cannot wait to uh, to get that feature matchup. Uh, so I hope you all enjoyed it as well, and uh, yeah. We'll see you do it all over again very, very soon here on The League That Means Nothing. Cheers!